Computer World put out a piece citing a bunch of research about technology jobs in the U.S. So here's the headline. How many jobs are available in technology in the U.S.? Tech workers are riding high as unemployment drops again and salaries rise. There we go. There we go. This proves a major point I made months ago. People who follow me know that several months ago, when you started seeing high-profile layoffs from the likes of uh, Facebook, Meta, uh, Netflix, and others, people on the interwebs and the YouTube, especially the young nerdlings YouTubers, were going, ah, it's the end of, it's the end of code, that's it, it's over, there's no more jobs, it's terrible, ah. And I told everybody to relax, take it easy, it's normal, ebb and flow, the cycle in development. You can go watch the previous videos, learn the details. Bottom line is I suggested that everybody should relax, take it easy, hunker down, study, which keep studying, keep learning, keep improving your skills, technical and communication and so forth. You'll be fine. I'm switching camera angles to make it interesting. Another thing that happened is a chat a GPT. That came out again. Uh, the same cast of characters, young nerdlings came out and said, oh, it's over, coding's over. Ah. There was even major articles in publications and they were suggesting that coding was over because of AI and ChatGPT. Again, I pointed out, this is not the case. All that the AI tools were going to do, it was going to make coding uh, more efficient, quality of code was going to increase, the speed at developing will increase a bit, but it was not going to change the demand uh, ratio, if you will, for developers. Let me say that again in simpler terms. It wasn't going to change whether or not we needed developers. I'm telling you. I told people back then, I said, don't worry, ChatGPT is not a threat. It's just a new technology that's come out and we're going to integrate it into the way we write code. That's all it is. I've seen this several times before. I'm in the park, so I have to watch out and make sure no squirrels jump me from behind. So if you don't know who I am, I've been writing code since the early 90s. And um, so I've seen these cycles happen over and over again. I've seen recessions hit, and I've seen where the hiring temporarily goes down and shoots back up. I've seen new technologies come out, disruptive technologies in the space will come out, disrupt things for a short period of time, but it always ends up creating a lot more jobs in the end. And guess what? This article, which I'm going to go over to highlights, I'll link to it below, uh, confirms this in real data. So I'm not going to read the whole article for you. You can do that for yourself. I'm going to give you the bullet points. And I'm going to give you my perspective, you know, from the point of view of a 169-year-old nerd, Uncle Steph. Positions in emerging technologies or jobs requiring emerging tech skills, such as artificial intelligence, data science, ARVR accounted for 23% of all tech job postings in August. Among emerging tech job postings, 37% were associated with AI of California, Texas, New York, Massachusetts, and Virginia, showing the highest numbers of AI related jobs. Before you run out and say, I gotta learn AI, I gotta learn AI, you have to understand what this all means and how this all works. So there's two types of jobs in AI it, there's the research where you're developing the AIs, and there's the, I'll call them the implementers. People who leverage AI into existing workflows or in, into existing software. So for example, this camera here, I'm using this camera, and it uses AI to track me and autofocus me and to, uh, to expose me properly. Camera companies are leveraging AI to improve the quality of their product. You see that in the web space, you see it everywhere. So you're gonna see, well you're gonna, you, you are seeing a lot of jobs now where companies are integrating AI technology into their existing uh, product line or looking to enhance their product lines. So it's not about going out there and learning how to build AI from scratch. I think a lot more jobs are gonna be learning how to implement AI into uh, traditional software frameworks, traditional software. So for example, I have one friend whose company and it's a growing company where they implement AI. So essentially, you go to a company and a company wants to create a chatbot or some other AI implementation. So what he does is he uh, 
goes in there, gathers all the information from the company, and he builds and trains an AI, some third-party AI, and then they implement the result of that uh, AI into a website, into the client's website, or maybe they have, a, maybe they leverage my uh, my buddy's portal website. But the key is that it's a website that's delivering the AI tool. The AI is key, but really it's still about web and implementing an a, implementing a um, an API. In this case, an AI-based API. The article continues. New data from IT staffing firm Experis found that an increasing number of companies surveyed are either adopting or planning to adopt emerging technologies in their recruiting processes. The emerging technology, of course, is AI, AR, VR. That comes as more than three quarters, 78% of IT organizations report difficulty finding talent with the right skills. This is a 17-year high. Let me emphasize that one more time. Just switching camera positions, keep you interested. Let me emphasize that last statement, very important. That comes as more than three quarters, 78% of IT organization report difficulty finding talent with the right skills, a 17-year high. So remember, if at the beginning of this video, I was uh, talking about how all these doomers were saying, oh no, it's the end of jobs, ah, software development's over, ah. Well, the actual data is out, which confirms what I had asserted back then, based on my experience, that we're seeing an increase in demand. And with the increase in demand, they can't uh, find the talent. You know what that means? Salaries go up. So, bottom line is, if you want to take any way, anything away from this video, uh, yeah, good time to get into development. Uh, number one, salaries are increasing. Number two, uh, web is still king. Number three, but if you can combine web with uh, AI implementations, AR, VR, perhaps, uh, you're gonna be in a very good position, very good position. So I have a boot camp, and one of the things I teach in the boot camp is the key to success as a professional developer, again, based on my experience going back to the 90s, one of the keys to success is mastery of the fundamentals. Mastery of the fundamentals, number one. Number two, I always say, it's all about the web. It's all about the web is not only, well, it's, it's the dominant development uh, avenue today, I assert it will continue to be dominant and I think it will become even more important. Think of the web as the hub of access to information. Everything goes through the web, right? And with the web, you got your, your main hub is the website or the web app, and they'll implement AI into the web. They'll implement a lot of AR, VR through the web. So you still need that web, right? So if you can learn the web and then combine that with modern skills in terms of the emergent technologies, the AI implementations, the AR, VR, you're golden. The article continues. Uh, according to Experis, 58% of employers believe that AI and virtual reality will create jobs, not kill them. Additionally, cybersecurity, technical support, and customer experience remain high priority IT staffing areas. Half of employers say they are training and upskilling their current workforce to address staffing challenges. The integration of AI, machine learning, VR, AR, and other emerging technologies is rap rapidly transforming industries and driving the need for an adaptable workforce, says uh, Experis Senior Vice President Gur Doyle. We are seeing companies embrace these new technologies with many seeking to hire or upskill existing talent to take advantage of potential productivity gains. Smart employers know that embracing digitization and nurturing human talent will enhance their readiness to succeed in this era of rapid technology advancement. IT salaries were on the rise too, according to a mid-year analysis by business consultancy Janko. Janko's pretty big. As more companies invested in IT, the emphasis in recent years has been on both e-commerce and mobile computing. Again, something I've been talking about for quite a while. Just look at my back catalog of videos. You'll see that every prediction I made going back years has come to pass. I don't have a nerd crystal ball. I have, though, is 
almost, it's going to be almost 30 years of experience in software and in business. So I kind of understand what's going on, right? You see the same patterns over and over again. The emphasis in recent years has been on e-commerce and mobile computing. And with growing numbers of cyber attacks and data breaches, CIOs are looking to harden their sites and lock down data access to protect all of their electronic assets, according to Yanko, no, Janko Associates, J-A-N-C-O. The lone drag on the July data was in employer job postings for tech occupation, which slipped from 236,000 to 204 for the month that's openings there's tons of openings this is in the u.s by the way um, and again you shouldn't let the monthly numbers freak you out because there'll be all kinds of monthly numbers you have to look at the trends the trends is what what matters you look at any stock for example you see they go like this right and the trend is what you want to look at whether the trend is up or the trend is down Look at the trend. If one basic rule of investing, look at the trend more than anything else. Don't get caught up in the daily news because what you'll find if you get into the market, um, there's a lot of um, manipulation. You know, some big traders have been minted to this. They'll, 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 they'll pay to place an article, and the article is published, and they'll say, oh, Apple's terrible. Ah. And then uh, they'll move the market a little bit because the, the traders will get skittish. And they'll sell to make some money and then you find out six months later your stock has gone the apple stock has gone up and you're kicking yourself for having sold your stock one last point i'm going to bring up from this article many roles especially in te telecommunications and cloud providers are being automated and eliminated he said cios and cfos are looking to improve the productivity of it by automating processes and reporting where possible and focusing on eliminating non-essential managers staff and services experienced coders and developers still have opportunities the highest demand continues to be for security professionals programmers and blockchain processing it pros well there you go blockchain processing um, i said blockchain was always a niche but apparently uh it's there's not enough blockchain coders still so there's a demand there i'm not saying drop everything and get into blockchain i think again uh when you're looking at things, programmers in general is where you want to be. So what's the broader point here? Uh, yeah, the broader point is you always want to be in a position where you're a builder of things rather than a maintainer or implementer of things. You want to be a developer, not a user. So uh, people talked about getting into being a DevOps specialist and so forth. That's fine. There's lots of opportunity, I'm sure, but I'd rather be somebody who builds new things rather than uh, rather than leverages or, or just implements things, if that makes any sense. Again, it's a personality thing. Um, I have just seen over the years where implementers, users, uh, tend to get replaced over time. It's very hard to replace the creative process, the creative job of building software, and it is very creative, but it's much easier to replace the job of somebody who just uh, makes sure a process works out well. So I don't know if that makes any sense. If it doesn't, let me know in the comments below and I'll expand upon that in, an, in another video. All right, I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, let me know. Like the video, comment. My name is Steph, some people call me Uncle Steph. I have a boot camp and mentoring program. Check it out, UncleSteph.com. It's unique because A, I've been in the game for nearly 30 years as a developer, even longer as an entrepreneur. So I'm sharing my decades of experience with you. And what I teach in the mentoring program goes way beyond code, way beyond code. And that makes me, that's another reason, that's reason number two why, it's, why it is a unique program. Reason number three, well, what do I teach? I teach you psychology skills, soft skills, how to get a job, how to freelance if you want to get there, how to manage projects, how to manage your own emotions. It's a pretty interesting program. It's unique, it's organic, it's been evolved and uh, refined based on the needs of the group. So check it out at unclesteph.com. And uh, that's it, bye-bye. As I've been saying for a while now, 
if you want to have maximum cognitive capacity, whether you're learning to be a developer or you are a developer, anything really, you got to get the body in shape. The body and the mind are, are connected and if your body is healthy, you will, you'll be smarter, literally. You will have faster cognitive processes, uh, life will be a lot easier, you'll have better mood. So the basis of health is very simple, move, get out there. Even walking, I try to walk 10,000 steps a day besides other exercise, but walking is the beginning. Walk, walk, walk. Integrate uh, some of the things you do with walking. Maybe when you listen to podcasts, walk. Maybe if you're, uh, I don't know, listening to an ebook, walk, don't sit there. Get out there, move the body, trust me. As you get older, it starts to pay off huge dividends, huge dividends. The other thing you can do is uh, stop eating bad food. It's a, high, it's a bad habit, I, you know, I was there. Get rid of the bad food. I know you've heard this everywhere, but I, I think daily messages or regular messages will help you uh, get, drive this into your brain. Get rid of the bad food, get rid of the bad food. Uh, especially, you know, sugars, carbs, breads, pasta, uh, cakes, all that stuff. Even if you cut that down by, if you can cut it down by half to begin with, it's gonna have a very positive impact. You are what you eat, so do you wanna be like a, a muffin? You know, it's not cool.